We've been talking about equivalent fractions, and today we're gonna to talk about another type of equivalence, and that is between mixed numbers and improper fractions. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut it out and glue it in. Okay, let's review what a mixed number is and what an improper fraction is. So this is a mixed number. It's just a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. An improper fraction looks like a regular fraction, but the numerator, the number on top, is bigger. Both of these represent values that are more than one whole. So if you see an improper fraction, you know it's more than one whole. All right, so if we want to change a mixed number into its equivalent improper fraction, you can do that pretty easily. So there's a strategy called the Texas two-step. The reason it's called the Texas two-step is when you put down the little tricks to help you solve it, it looks sort of like the abbreviation for Texas. This is a plus sign, this is a multiplication sign, it sort of looks like Texas, and there are two steps. So let's look at step one. So here I wrote the T and the X to remind me of the operations. So step one is to do the Texas math to find your new numerator. So step one is to find our new numerator. So we're gonna start at the bottom and circle around. So we're gonna start at the five, the denominator. So I'm gonna put that there. Now I'm gonna go around, so five times three and three plus two. So now we just have to do the math to figure out our numerator. Five times three is 15, plus two is 17. That was step one. Now step two is to keep your denominator the same. So if our denominator was five, then our denominator is still going to be five. And that's because the denominator never changes because the denominator always, always represents the number of parts that are in one of the holes. So why does this Texas two-step work? Why are we multiplying and then adding? Well, let's think about this mixed number. We have three holes, right? And then we have two extra fifths. So if we have three holes right there, and then we have a little bit more and they're fifths, so we need to have five pieces. Each of these have five pieces too, right? So if we have two of the fifths shaded in the leftovers, and then all of these are shaded, that means we have five in each. So five, 10, 15. What is five times three? 15. We have three holes and each of those holes have five pieces. That's why we can multiply it. Five times three is 15. So in these complete holes, we have 15 parts. Well, we have two extra parts here. So that's why we add on the numerator. We're adding on the extra parts. So 15 and two more is 17. And that's our answer. Our denominator is still five because the denominator never changes. So three and two fifths is equivalent, it's the exact same amount as 17 fifths. It's just sometimes we wanna think of it as the number of holes, and sometimes we, we might wanna think of it as the number of parts. So sometimes you start with a mixed number and you convert it into a fraction, but sometimes you start with a fraction and you convert it into a mixed number. So how do we do that? Well, we go back to one thing we learned, the very first fraction lesson, and that is that fractions are just division in disguise. If you see 17 fifths, you can also read it 17 divided by five. So if you do the math, it will help you figure out your mixed number. So step one is just to divide to find your quotient and your remainder. So if I do that division, if I do 17 divided by five, well, how many times does five go into 17? 
five, 10, 15. It goes in three times, but that only makes 15. So we'll have a remainder of two. So 17 divided by five is three, remainder two. Hmm, does that look familiar over here? Three with a leftover two? This is where your answer comes from. So step two is to use your answers to create your mixed number. Three represents the three holes, right there. Two represents the leftover parts. So your remainder is your numerator. And once again, the denominator stays the same. The denominator never ever changes because there are always gonna be five parts in the whole. If we're looking at two fifths, then they're always gonna have five parts. This is fifths. So now that you know how to do it, if you see an improper fraction and you like mixed numbers better, you can just convert it yourself. If you see a mixed number and it's easier for you to work with improper fractions, then you can convert that. All right, so go ahead and add your page numbers to our equivalent fractions, and then you can add it to your table of contents, and you can even add, go back and add what we learned to your glossary so that you can find those skills later when you have a question. I'll see you next time.